many of you still have house cleaning to do before Christmas? Hey. How many of you are on Facebook? I posted this morning a quote from well, one of my favorite quotes from Phoebe Palmer, who's a 19th century woman evangelist who said, don't waste time cleaning house if you have a call to preach. And so that made me feel better about standing in the pulpit today if you uh, get a look at my living room this morning. An old man lived in the center of a desolate and hopeless city. The man walked outside his house and onto the streets, and he yelled, Love, peace, righteousness. The next day, he would do exactly the same thing. He would leave his house, walk out into the street, and yell at the top of his lungs, Love, peace, righteousness. He would do this every day, rain or shine, like clockwork. Well, if you've ever had a noisy neighbor, you can imagine this. One day, the man's next-door neighbor, who was tired of the daily yelling, went out onto the street and confronted him, and he said, Hey, man, are you crazy? What the heck do you think you're doing? Every day, you come out of your house and you yell, Love, peace, and righteousness. Fool, don't you know nobody is listening to you? This city is full of hate and crime and hopelessness. There's no love of neighbor, and there is no peace and righteousness to be found. So give it a rest and save your breath. Don't you know that you can't change the world? The old man said, you're right. My yelling and shouting about love, peace, and righteousness may not change the world, but one thing this will do is stop the world from changing me. Pray with me. Lord, today we are reminded about this one who cried out in the wilderness. This one who went before you, calling all to repent and to turn from their sins. Open our hearts, I pray, this day to that same message. We ask this in the name of the one who was sent into this world to save us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you are an avid news junkie or like following the news, you may have seen this in the national headlines. In my hometown of McGowan, Texas this week, many were thankful when a jury sentenced an 85-year-old former priest convicted of murder to life in prison Friday afternoon, wrapping up a case that nearly lasted six decades long. It's a story that I have followed for years, and many now believe that justice has finally been served. This week, our theme for the second Sunday of Advent is the way of justice. I know when I hear the word justice, the first thing that comes to mind is the criminal justice system in our country. As humans, we long to see justice served, and things made right. I think it's the way God has created us to be. And it's also part of what our country is built upon, after all, justice <laughs> for all. Well, I took a little stroll around Google, and justice is defined as just behavior and treatment. For many of the margin, on the margins of our society, they wonder if justice will ever come. Like me, perhaps you have friends and family and neighbors who struggle weekly to provide for their families. Times have changed and there are many who are working more than just one job to make ends meet, to keep their bills paid, to provide health care for their children and be able to survive by keeping a roof over their head. It's hard for me to drive to Ironton or to Ashland and not notice the hotel, the Country Hearth Inn, which sits along Route 52, and not be saddened by the fact that for so many families in our community, that is the place that they call home. 
Every week here at church we get phone calls from people who need help. Maybe it's a utility bill, a prescription that needs picked up but they have no money for, or a few bucks to get some gas. I was talking to one of our customers at Maxine's this past week and she told me that she doesn't have any money to buy presents for her children or grandchildren this Christmas and so the only thing that she knows to do and that what she has decided to do is to not pay her utility bills this month. And then there's the world of addiction that is pressing in all around us. Whether we like it or not, it is penetrating our neighborhoods, our homes, and the lives of folks in our own families. Amen? The drug epidemic has quickly spread to include folks we know and love. It isn't anything to hear that another person in our community has died from an overdose. Where was it this week? The Kroger bathroom, right? We all remember too well that in 2016 we had 26 people die within four hours just across the river in Huntington from what they call a bad batch. And unfortunately, it isn't anything to see drug dealers and prostitutes selling their wares at the corners of our streets in broad daylight either. As we sat at a light this week, we watched an exchange with our kids in the back seat. The thing that breaks my heart the most isn't just the lives that are being ruined by the drugs but seeing how it is affecting families and children at every socioeconomic level. The word, the world of addiction, doesn't care from where you come, does it? It doesn't matter if you've grown up in an affluent family, you are not immune. Nowadays it isn't anything for a child to be without one or both of their, their parents because of drugs and alcohol. Our foster care system, at least in Ohio, from what I hear, is overflowing with children who have been removed from their homes and are living with people who are not their family. It's just so sad. I was talking with one of my mom's friends this week following our meeting about some of the concerns that I have for this very neighborhood. She shared with me that her husband, who is a middle school math teacher at Barbersville was approached by one of his students recently who asked him this question. He said, Mr. Barry, you're a Christian, right? To which he answered, yes, I am. And after he told him this, this child went on to ask him if he would pray for his mother and for him because his mother's boyfriend had just died from a drug overdose. Folks in our families, churches, neighborhoods, and schools are hurting. And I don't have to stand up here and be the one to tell you that. Our prisons are full. Our rehab houses are filling up and they're looking for more to buy. Families are being fractured all across our country today. And unfortunately, it doesn't end there. Perhaps you or someone you know is suffering every day with being treated unfairly. Perhaps it's stereotyping, discrimination, or violence and abuse. For those of us who have experienced injustice, prejudice, and discrimination, we know that the struggle for justice is real. As we look at our scripture lesson, this second Sunday of Advent, I love the image of John the Baptizer out in the wilderness. Do you? Perhaps for us, he should be that, be called the messenger of good news, because he comes to prepare for us, for the, he comes to prepare us for the coming of the one who can save us from all unrighteousness. I look forward every Advent to hearing his familiar words. You all know them. Prepare the way of the Lord. You see, here he is, John, out calling for people to come and to turn from their sins, repent, and be baptized. Turn from your sins, repent, and be baptized. 
I don't know how many of you were here last week and heard about the beginning of our new church year. And with the beginning of Advent, we begin a new year, a clean slate. And I think it is a totally appropriate reminder for all of us that we are starting over. This is it, folks. It's our chance to get ready, to get things right, because he is crying out to everyone who will listen. Jesus is coming. Prepare the way. Prepare your hearts. Don't wait. Come and be baptized. Brothers and sisters, when God sent us his son, he sent him so that we might be set free from our sins. He sent him so that we might have a way to be reconciled unto him. I love Christmas. I know it's a lot of fun to string the lights and sing our favorite Christmas carols and drink our favorite punch and nog. Any of you like eggnog? Can we share some? Not too many people drink it, but if we all buy one big one, we can maybe tonight. Another round of nog. But I, for one, find it a great way to celebrate, not the nog, but at Christmas, a great way to celebrate Jesus' birth. But listen here. If we fail to recognize that God sent Jesus to us just because it was a cool thing to do, then we're missing the point. God sent us Jesus in order, brothers and sisters, to redeem us from our sins. Perhaps we haven't yet fully grasped what this Christmas celebration is really all about. It's something that I've been trying to think about and remind myself this month. If you've read through the Gospels, then you are aware that Jesus' passion for justice and love led him to reach out to those on the margins of society. He went to the righteous and to the unrighteous. He went to the poor, the women, the children, the Samaritans, the lepers, the tax collectors, and yes, even the prostitutes. You see, Jesus came to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In both the Old and the New Testaments, God's intention is justice, particularly for the most vulnerable in our society. When we begin to talk about reaching out to the most vulnerable, I know it's easy to kind of start thinking about what's for lunch or what you're going to make for the Advent dinner. And I know that it can be a scary thing. Not many people I know want to walk into a prison to visit and minister to those who are incarcerated. And it can be a difficult thing to even begin a conversation with someone who's an addict, not knowing if they are going to want something from us just to get their next fix. And it can be difficult to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, those who are truly suffering from injustice. And I want to encourage you today that that is exactly why now more than ever, we as Christians must seek a life of discipleship and move closer to Christ. We need to spend time daily in His Word and in communion with Him. And I know there are always reasons why we can't seem to get it done. And we need to be in worship weekly so that we can be renewed and refreshed within the community of believers. Why? Why, you ask? Why does it matter? Well, when the Holy Spirit moves upon us, moves upon us and calls us to minister to the least and to the lost, to those who are suffering from injustice in our world, we will be better prepared to say, yes, I will go. And when the Holy Spirit moves upon us as a church to begin a new outreach ministry, we will be better prepared to say, yes, Lord, we will. Oh, Lord. When your Holy Spirit moves upon us, may we not hesitate, but simply say, yes, I will follow you. 
I will preach the good news to the poor. I will proclaim the good the release. I will proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. I will work to liberate the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This Christmas, may we draw ever more near to the way of justice and to the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. This is the book that Charles and I are using this Advent season to prepare our messages. And justice for me was not something that I am, have been processing in my mind, what it looks like for me as a Christian, what it looks like for us as a church here in Chesapeake or as a church in the United Methodist Church. But I encourage you, if you have a few minutes, get online and go to the United Methodist church and society and there you are going to find a list of all of the social justice issues that we are encouraged to be a part of and to minister in. But I, I uh, work through this every day this week and at the end there is a benediction, an Advent benediction and I want to close with this. Bless to us, O oh God, your Advent vision that we may see with your compassion. Bless to us, O oh God, your Advent heart, that we may love with holy fairness. Bless to us, O oh God, your Advent soul, that we may act with Mary's yes, and let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing Advent stream. Amen. I invite you now to turn in your hymn book. Oh. 